Hello and welcome to the Time Shift, I'm Chris Hall and this week we're reviewing the latest episode of Doctor Who entitled The Battle of Ranscor of Colos. Now because this video is going to be a review of the aforementioned episode, this video is going to be spoiler heavy. So if you don't want this video episode, whatever it is, spoiled for you for whatever reason, it's best to switch this video off now to avoid any spoilers. But for the rest of us, let us all dive headfirst into the Battle of Chicken Korma! Woo! Alright, let's just address the elephant in the room before we get too far with this week's episode of The Time Shift. The reason why there's no video this week is because I am incredibly ill. I don't know whether you could hear that in my voice or not, but it, it's difficult for me to speak. And because I didn't want to have to chop my video up in such a way that the end result would make me look like Max Headroom, we're having to do it as an audio-only one this week. It's easier for me to edit, it's easier for me to record, and it requires less faffing about. Honestly, if I tried to set up my camera and that today, given the way that I feel, it would probably finish me off. So, for now, let's just enjoy some stock images of space I made for the time shift. Ah, what a wonderful sight. Anyway, I want to know before we get too far into this week's review, what did you think about this week's episode of Doctor Who? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comment section in whichever website you're watching this on, and it will get back to you shortly, either directly in the comments themselves or towards the end of a future video. As next week's video is going to be the review of this series as a whole, I want to know what your overall thoughts of this series have been. Have you loved it? Have you hated it? What have been your favourite and least favourite episodes? Let's get some going in the comment section and that way I can get a better idea of the overall thoughts of the community as a whole. As for the episode itself, I think that as an episode in and of itself, it was fine. I did enjoy it more or less. I think that a lot of problems stem from the issues surrounding Tim Shaw, but we'll discuss that shortly. And also the other issues is that I'm not 100% sure whether this episode works as a series finale or not. Had this been episode 3 or episode 7 or just any other episode within the series itself, this would have been fine. I think that having it as a series finale is... It's hard for me to reconcile because I think that whilst I'm not a fan of the series long mysteries that we had in the past... I do believe that we need something more of a definitive full stop ending point, a big climactic finale to end our series. And bearing in mind that, yes, the news is true, we're not going to be having a series of Doctor Who next year. To end it all off with just an episode which just feels like the most Doctor who -y of Doctor Who episodes as ever Doctor Who'd, I'm not entirely sure I like. Of course, in the classic series, there wasn't these big climactic epic finales. The ending story was whichever episode they put at the end of the series. There was no epic two-parter or great final confrontation. It was just whatever the ending story may be. Whether that meant the Doctor was back in the past or in the future, in contemporary times. Whether he was fighting Daleks or Cybermen or Quarks or whatever. Whatever he was fighting at the end of the series was what he was fighting. There was no epic speech to end it all off. And whilst I can be sympathetic to want to move more towards that kind of format where we're not so reliant on classic imagery and classic moments and, frankly, a writing and series style, which at this point is incredibly dated. I mean, just think about the sheer number of programs that are out these days on Netflix or Amazon or any other streaming service right now. You don't really have these epic two-parters to end a series anymore. They are these singular, continuous storylines. And I'm not entirely sure whether the big two-part finale still is relevant in this day and age. But with a series like Doctor Who, and given the kind of program that it is, I think that that's what this series needed. It needed a big final moment to really connect all the dots and bring everything back to focus. We had the reunion with Tim Shaw, and none of the Stenza, but definitely Tim Shaw. I think that his plan felt incredibly convoluted. And I feel that the fact that there was so much exposition when he was speaking, so much so that you had the moment where the Doctor was running through the corridor and you had him talking in the background like, Yes, Doctor, 
Run. There is nowhere you can go now. My power will become maximum. My power will cause me to become a god. And I shall get revenge on you and all those that you love. For I have taken the humdy dumdy marshmallow people and made them my slaves. Their yummy chummy powers are making me a god. I shall destroy all that you love through the power of them plugging me into this giant LED lighting scheme. Oh, a lighting scheme that will make even Corsair blush with rage. You know, that big epic speech which told us even more crap that was either self-evident or was totally unneeded. I think that that's just indicative of the fact that maybe this episode should have been a two-parter. You have the build-up to us finding Tim Shaw, then we learn about his plan, or we start to see his plan in action. You get some generic planet or moon that he destroys to prove his power almost in a Star Wars-esque kind of way and we just go from there. That I think would be a little bit more palatable than just the here's Tim Shaw, here he is making a big speech, here he is making another speech, here he is making a speech while the Doctor runs away, here's the Doctor trying to fix it, there we go, and she's also making a speech trying to make sense of everything that just happened. It's a lot of cramming, trying to fit so much into so little, so much talking, and awkward talking at that that didn't really make sense. I mean, remember towards the start of the episode when the captain guy who couldn't remember his name, he goes up to her and says, are you with them? The natural response in just about any form of fiction is, who are they, or who are them, if you want to take it a little more literal. And then you get that, but then she gives a response like, we, we are not of the people that are working with the peoples known as them or someone else that's confluced with whatever. I'm ill, forgive me if I sound a little bit waffly minded. I think that the episode in and of itself, Tim Shaw's plan, was just a thing that could have been ex explained with a line. He's using them to become a god. He's going to use their psychic powers to enhance himself beyond the point of all reasonable comprehension. That's all it needed. We didn't need nearly five minutes worth of dialogue to try and explain it. Keep it short, keep it succinct, keep it focused. Establish more about the powers of these two aliens that we see briefly in towards the start of the episode. I think also shorten the time frame because him existing on that planet for nearly 4,000 years just felt odd to me. And I think that these two alien entities suddenly worshipping, worshipping him just like that when they have the power to change the very fabric of a universe, felt really, really weird. I mean, within Doctor Who, there have been many different people, many different alien races that can change the universe in such a, in such a way. You have the monitors from many, many series ago, from uh, uh, Tom Baker's regeneration story, and also the two twins from The Twin Dilemma who could math things into existence. So in the series itself, it's been long established, but... Within those, we didn't need these big exposition dumps for us to understand it. You just have to say, these people can make the universe change. They can change it and alter it. Tim Shaw wants to use that to make himself a god. There, done. Just like that. No more need for any kind of extra waffle towards it. And then that's what had been done. One thing that I really didn't like about this episode was... Graham's heel turn. Him decidedly decided, Oh, you know what, uh, Doctor? I'm now going to go and kill Tim Shaw. Yeah, he killed my wife. Now I'm going to kill him. Yeah. And of course, she makes a speech of, If you kill him, then you're no better than him. Because this is 21st century Doctor Who, when we don't know how to write the Doctor being a pacifist without it coming across either ham-fisted, weird, or having them shout at military personnel. I didn't like that. I don't think it added much tension into the moment because you knew that this was only going to go one of three ways way number one he kills tim shaw the doctor doesn't have them as a companion anymore that's it they're done which wasn't going to happen option number two they try to fight tim shaw and they die because tim shaw's a predator like alien who has the some knowledge of his entire race and has been enhanced with godlike powers he kills graham which again isn't going to happen because of the popularity of the character or option number three, Graham kills Tim Shaw, doesn't kill Tim Shaw and just makes a speech about he's the better man and that's what we got. Which of those three possibilities felt to me like the weakest one. At that point, you may as well not have it. You could have had a moment where 
he has Tim Shaw with the gun and you know what's going on in his mind just by the strength of an actor that uh, Bradley Walsh can be and you know the context of it. You know that he's got this guy in his sights and that just one shot, one single squeeze of the trigger could kill Tim Shaw and get revenge. You didn't need the full bit towards the beginning of the episode with the doctor where Graham just says, oh, hey, Doc, I'm now going to kill somebody. I know you don't like killing people, but I'm going to do it. You know, you can't convince me otherwise. I'm just going to flatly declare it. You didn't need that. The, stim the simple backstory that we've had for this character over the course of this series would have been enough. The moment that you see Graham there with a gun pointing it at Tim Shaw, knowing what Tim Shaw has done to the woman he loved, then you know, then you know what, what the stakes of it are. You didn't need any additional dialogue with which to do that. That's all it needed to be. But of course, this whole episode over-eggs the custard, I think, in certain areas of it. Tim Shaw, dialogue stuff could have been cut down the whole th heel turn of graham could have been cut out because all again all you really needed was him that scene where he was pointing the gun at tim shaw and the little speech he gave that was perfect that's all you needed you could have had him throughout the episode just looking at weapons and just almost casing them out trying to get a feel as to what would be the best way to kill tim shaw without him ever uttering a word that that was his plan maybe there's a bit when him and uh him and Ryan are trying to break everybody out that reveals his intention, but you don't do it so early into the story because then it feels rather forced and laboured, but I'm starting to get into waffly territory and I need to clear my throat, so now let us dive headfirst into the performance section. And here we are in the performance section where I talk about the performances and character and all that malarkey. So let us go to our main cast as we almost always do. Well, we all, of course we always do because they are the main cast, so we must talk about the performances. I think that this, for Jodie Whittaker, is probably her best overall performance of the Doctor, particularly the speech given towards the end of the story. A speech that's given a little bit more weight to it, bearing in mind that we're not getting another full series until 2020. Well, that's a rant and a discussion for a time that I can go more than five minutes without needing to cough my lungs out because of just how animated I might get discussing that, but that's a whole other point. Whilst I am of the mind, I don't think the Doctor needs to give the I am the Doctor speech for us to accept that actor being the Doctor. I did appreciate it. It was a moment where it was undeniably her moment. It was a moment where she was sharing the line like we saw in Else. It wasn't a bit where she was giving a speech that kind of felt half-formed, like we had in Kablam. This was something that was uniquely hers and gave us a genuine feeling as to the kind of Doctor that she is or the kind of Doctor that she should be if she was given more time with which to be developed and have more time focused on her. I think that, again, the massive problem with Bradley Walsh's performance of Graham isn't so much his performance but how the character was dealt with. I think him suddenly deciding, oh yeah, I I'm going to kill Tim Shaw now with just such a flat bit of dialogue really undermine the weight and the importance and the seriousness of what he was going to do. And it's a whole bit that could have been left to one side, could have been had been existed in the background. Something that was suggested and hinted at until the moment that we get the feeling of, oh my God, is Graham really going to try and kill him? That That's a that's a bad thing, Graham. Don't do that because the Doctor's going to be mighty mad at you and he, he, you're going up against a, against an alien predator, man, and that, that's going to be and you're getting killed, uh, Graham. Don't do it. Oh, God, this is so dramatic and important and it's it's making me feel anxious. Oh, dear. That would have been far better than the, yeah, we're going to kill him now. He killed my wife. Now I'm going to kill him. Bye. Which is more or less what we got. I think that uh, Ryan, I've warmed up to him. I think that when he's able to act like a human being and not the moments where he's whooping and hollering or running about, he's fine. He's a perfectly understandable and caring character. Who I, I like the fact that his and uh, Graham's relationship has reset prepared itself in such a way that they can get on better now, and I really enjoy that. And I'm interested to see where this goes going forward. And I think that Yaz, yeah, Yaz was fine in this episode. I think that her and the Doctor just really need to have a hug, for goodness sake. But you know what? If they want to do the will they want this stuff for this, fine. I just want it to be acknowledged within the story itself. 
because I'm not a fan of the will they won't they kind of stuff because we all know that at some point in the other she's she's gonna make her feelings towards the doctor known she's even gonna give her a kiss or give her a hug and it's even gonna be this big emotional moment or it's gonna be kind of played for laughs because the doctor might not have comprehended all of this I mean could you just imagine that the doctor gave us this speech about some big sacrifice that she's going to seemingly make and Yaz panics and goes, Doctor, no, please don't do it. And she wraps her arms like a, like, around her, like, please don't go, I love you. And she's there, like, well, hold on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, it's a sacrifice, yeah, but I, I don't mean, like, I'm going to sacrifice myself to die. I'm just going to use this alien technology thing. And Yaz can be like, oh, oh, well, I, uh, and, you know, do it something like that. You can take it either way, and that would have been fun. And, you know, just have it happen. Have... Have either have them kissing or have them hugging or have them acknowledging the fact that Yaz has a rela- a thing for the Doctor, because if if she if this was with a male Doctor, we would have known this by now. There would have been tonguing by episode two for Christ's sake. But you know what? Whatever. If that's the way they want to play it, then fine, fine. Oh, and did you know that Mandip Gill used to go to the University of Central Lancashire? I didn't know that she used to go to the University of Central Lancashire. I, well, it turns out she went to the University of Central Lancashire. She went there, yes, she did. Yeah, 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 I know that. Sorry for the weird aside there, but, you know, that was pretty much said every five freaking minutes when I was at my graduation yesterday. Yes, I graduated from the University of Central Lancashire. So did she. She graduated around the time that I started there. Yeah, every five minutes or so, someone said, "Oh, did you know that she was she, uh, from Doctor Who? She's a uh, she's a uh, you scow here, you know? Yeah, real boon for the performing arts course that. Yeah, I remember having an interview there where someone sat, where one of the tutors snidely said, you know, this course, you know, might get a little bit more credibility if uh, one of you suddenly became famous, like uh, <laughs> becoming a p- companion in the Doctor Who program. Even though I don't know if you watched that." <laughs> And lo and behold, a few years later, it happened. Nearly nine years later, it happened, but whatever, I'm getting distracted. Our extended cast. I think that Tim Shaw in this episode it was fine. I really kind of liked the character in a way. I wouldn't mind seeing him again, but... Uh, no, I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit more overview-y, that kind of talks about his arc as a whole, but we'll talk about the overview. And I think that the two yummy, yummy, cocoa, butter, friendly, umpa, lumpa, mind, warpy, yim, bam, ying, tong, little eye, po, cor, crikey, yum, yum, slick, stigby, dibbly, dibbly, joey, snowy, corky, go, blimey, governor people were fine. I think that their sudden decision, or rather one of them, sudden decision to worship Tim Shaw was really 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 dumb both within the story itself but on the meta angle of it these are entities who can change the fabric of the universe and decide to worship the first scruffy weirdo that appears next to them i know i'm not jealous of the fact that tim shaw the scruffy weirdo got worshipped as a god ahead of me the scruffy weirdo who's talking to you with a call and stuff but their performances were fine, even if the writing of them was kind of peculiar, but you know what? We're like it's waffly territory, so it's now going to the overview. And now the overview. What did I think of the episode as a whole? And as a whole, I have to say that I thought the episode was... Fine, I did enjoy it. I don't think it really works as a series finale, because it doesn't have the same kind of emotional weight as ones that we've had in the past. Certainly not in the series finale that we had for last year. No goddamn way, that's going to take a hell of a lot of beating, that is. And I think that just having the series of finale being yet another episode of Doctor Who really doesn't work. I feel that it needs to be a two-parter. I really dislike the way that the story arc for this series has been taken along. Whilst, yes, I am not a fan of the whole uh, mystery storyline thing that we've had in the past, where you'd have people randomly shouting Torchwood or Vote Saxon or promised land as we've had previously whilst i dislike that kind of stuff you know at least that was something and i think that hey maybe there's something else to this maybe there was supposed to be an overarching story that was woven into each episode a little bit more but it couldn't be done for one reason or another i mean look at the way that the first episode ended and how that wasn't replicated kind of interesting that ain't it maybe that's a discussion for another time i think that maybe tim shaw's reappearance would have had a little bit more weight in it if he was more of active presence throughout the series. 
even if it was just something that was hinted at him still being alive or still being active in some way. You know, maybe the Sengen configuration or whatever it was called, maybe that ship was travelling back in time, not travelling back in time, maybe it was travelling back towards safety. It was a, like a time, space, Red Cross kind of thing. It was transporting sick people that had been caught up in this war between these nine galaxies and Tim Shaw. And, you know, that sets up a hint as to what's going to be happening later on in the series. Or just have the odd mention that the Stens are mobilising and doing something creepy in the background. Don't do it in the historical episodes, do it in the uh, sci-fi episodes. That would at least make it feel as though he actually is more of an active threat that the Doctor needs to deal with sometime soon. Or maybe just have had a cameo appearance of him in some episode in the mid part of this series. That would have worked, I think. Just having him appear at the start of the series and reappear at the end of it means his sudden reveal as being the bad guy doesn't really have as much weight to it as I feel it desperately really needed. But I suppose I we might not see him again. Maybe it's a character who we'll see more of in the future. I mean, I wouldn't mind it if we saw him again. Maybe each time we see him, he looks a little bit more mechanised, a little bit more bionic as he desperately tries to upgrade and improve himself to finally defeat the Doctor to the point that maybe at some point in the future he's all machine and then the Doctor can play off that, like the fact that he's totally cast aside his identity as a Stenza to defeat the Doctor, thus proving that he's in, he's not fit to lead his people anymore that could have been an interesting thing if they end up doing that, but you know what whether we see him or not this week's episode was a fine way to see him off and a fine way to, well, end the series in some regards. I would have liked it if it had been a two-parter. Though, to be honest, if I went through all the things I would have liked for this series, I'd be talking about the series as a whole. And I'll be doing that next week. Next week, hopefully, depending on how well I'm feeling, it will be our series review, where I'll be reviewing this series as a whole, the things that I enjoyed about it, the things that I hate about it, discussing the episodes that I really think are fantastic and the episodes that I really will never, ever watch again. But what about you, dear viewer? What do you think about this week's episode of Doctor Who and this series as a whole? Let me know in the comment section whichever website you're watching this on and I will get back to you shortly. Either directly in the comment section themselves or towards the end of next week's video or during the video depending on the appropriate nature of them. Best episodes, worst episodes, overall feelings of the series as a whole, let me know down below and you will get read out you know. Hopefully I feel better next week so we can actually have the video up and it could be a little bit more animated. And hell, maybe I'll redo this video in the future. We'll soon see about that. But I would like to thank you all for watching or listening or whichever. Oh, lick, lick the lick button. No, no. Lick my buttons. No. L press the like button. Like this video. Click the bell. And subscribe for more videos from me. And I want all your good feelings and good vibes and wishes to get better soon because I desperately need them right now. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe, click your bell. Thank you and goodbye.